I'm Adrian and today I'm in country mode and if country guitar is not your thing please don't worry because I hope what I'm going to explain in this video is going to be applicable to other styles of music as well but specifically what I wanted to talk about is country string bending and it's that kind of sound where you get a guitar to sound a little bit like a pedal steel guitar it's a very distinctive country guitar sound you hear it in players like James Burton, uh, Clarence White, just about every great country guitar player really and uh, there are lots of ways of doing this on the guitar some of them are horribly complex and I'm not going to pretend that I'm some kind of Jerry Donahue like master at this kind of thing but what I'm going to do is just focus on one quite simple lick and uh, the, the lick itself goes like this it seems to me to be the the most common uh, country bending lick around it goes like this um, <laughs> There we go. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time. Uh, <laughs> no, um, seriously, it's um, it's a simple enough lick. I can show you that lick in about 30 seconds. But uh, what, what I really wanted to do in this video is explore what's going on behind this lick. Um, talk a little bit about the theory, um, how to come up with some variations on it and you know how to really use this lick and get it into your playing. So uh, let's get started. So it's always nice to learn a lick from some bloke on YouTube and I do it all the time myself. There'll be some amazing dude doing some amazing lick and I'll go wow I've got, I've got to learn that and I'll sit down and, and try and get it under my fingers but I have to say that those kind of licks very rarely stay with me I'll learn it and then the next day it will be more or less completely forgotten and uh, what I actually think is more valuable is learning an idea and a concept and uh, understanding how it works understanding how you can come up with your own variations on an idea and that's much more likely to stay with you and much more likely to be something that you can actually use in your own playing. So that's the kind of angle that I'm going to try and come at things from in this video and uh, I'd like to start by just getting our bearings on the fretboard. So this lick and the variations that I'm going to show you on this lick are all in the key of A. The lick is designed to work over an A major chord and it's played in and around this area of the guitar, so the ninth and tenth positions. And one thing I, I like to do with my licks, with my solo lines, is to associate them with the underlying chord shapes and scales and just to have all of that musical information associated together and right there under my fingertips in uh, any given position on the guitar. So in this particular position on the guitar, in, in the key of A major, uh, then the, the first thing I might think about would be the, the root notes and uh, what you've got in this position is uh, an A octave shape. We've got an A note here at the 12th fret on the A string and at the 10th fret on the B string. Um, kind of an octave shape onto which you can hang all of this other musical information in this particular part of the guitar. So on top of that you could play an A chord shape. Um, uh, some of you might know this is like a, a C bar chord type form, but it's it's an A major chord that I that I'm playing here, derived from an, an open C uh, C uh, uh, open position chord. Um, so that's just the the twelfth fret. Um, that's the root twelfth uh, fret on the A string. Then we've got uh, the the C sharp at the the eleventh fret on the D string, and an E at the ninth fret on the G string. Uh, which is the fifth and then we've got another A root note there at the 10th fret on the B and another C sharp at the the ninth fret on the top string so that's that's our A major chord in this position that's giving you all, all, all the uh, all the important chord tones in this in this key so you've got root third fifth root third um, play another fifth there if you wanted to as well so we've got the octave shape we've got the chord uh, you could think of things like the, the A major pentatonic scale in this position. Uh, or you've got the, the full A major scale in this position. Um, which will give you all, all of the other kind of colour tones that you can can use over this particular chord in in your licks. So, um, so I want you to bear all of that stuff in mind while we're talking about this lick because that's what's going to enable you to to use the lick and to to come up with your own variations and to to access other kind of notes in and around these these licks. So, onto the the lick itself, the uh, the basic lick, which uh, which goes like this. Um, <laughs> So 
so um, I'll show you the notes and I'll explain a little bit about what's what's going on here. So we're starting off at the 12th fret on the B string and we're going to bend that up a tone. And, uh, uh, and since it's it's one of these kind of pedal steel sounding licks, um, it's really important to try and be precise with your bending. I mean, the way a pedal steel guitar works, I've never actually played one, but um, as I understand it, the bends are achieved using uh, a series of uh, pedals, obviously, and also knee levers. Um, and you can very precisely sort of bend notes up to the to, to the correct pitch in, in a mechanical kind of a way. So. If you want to emulate that on the guitar, then obviously sort of bending precisely um, and trying to get it as in tune as you can is, is important. So, so all of the usual bending sort of good practice and good technique stuff applies sort of um, perhaps even more so in this particular style. So uh, I, I'm bending this B note here up to a C sharp. Um, I'm going to support the bend. I'm, I'm bending it with my third finger, but I'm supporting the bend with my other fingers there trying to get it as in tune as possible. So a B up to a C sharp. Um, if you're not sure whether it's in tune or not, you might just want to play the C sharp, the fretted C sharp at the 14th fret on the B string, just and listen to that as your target note. And then bend the B up until it matches that target pitch. So uh, try and get it as in tune as you can. Remember things like, um, you know, you're kind of bending with your wrist rather than trying to push with your, your fingers too much. Uh, personally, I kind of get my thumb over the top of the neck and use that to push against and to get a, a bit of leverage into the bend. So that's the first part of the lick. We're bending the B up to the C sharp, but then we're playing the note at the 12th fret on the top string. So we're, we're bending, holding the bend, and well, whilst we're at the top of the bend, I'm playing the note at the 12th fret on the top string. And uh, you can do that with the pick. Um, you, you might like to do it with uh, the, the middle finger of your picking hand, actually. Um, and just give that note a little bit of a snap. That, that really adds a, a, a nice kind of country flavor to it. So uh, we've got the bend. Then we're gonna pick the bent note again and release the bend. So and we're going to come down out of the bend and we're going to pull off straight away to the 10th fret on the B string. So it's bend, note on the top string, pick the bent note again, release and pull off to the first finger. And then just to finish off the lick I'm doing this. So I'm pulling off from the 11th fret to the 9th fret on the G string and then I'm resolving to this A note here, um, 10th fret on the B string. So um, just fingering wise, um, I'm kind of squeezing onto my third finger there for that 11th fret note. Um, that just sort of sets me up nicely for the, the, the final notes of the leg. So that, that's the phrase, simple enough, but I just want to talk a little bit about the, the function of the notes here and a bit about the theory of what's going on, because again, I think that's, that's really important if you're going to be able to use this lick and to come up with variations on it. So what, what's happening here is we're bending a B up to a C sharp, um, and the, the B is the second uh, degree of an A major scale, so or, or, or the... There's the A, there's the B, it's the second or the ninth, and we're bending that up to a C sharp. So it's the second going up to the third. So we're bending the, the second into the, the chord tone there. Um, um, and then the note we're playing on top is the fifth. Releasing the bend back to the sec second, and then we've got the root note there, and then we've got the sixth, pulling off to the fifth. Um, you just relate this to the degrees of the major scale. There's the sixth. The note below that is the fifth. And then that A note there is our root. That's our home note that we're, we're resolving the lick to. It's 
So that's the basic lick. Now I've got, got that lick, you understand what's going on. Now I'm going to just take you through a few ways that you can easily vary this basic idea um, and, and come up with lots of different uh, different spins on it. So that the first variation I've got goes like this. Um, so starting off with the same bend and the same note played on the top string, but we're, we're then just going between the, uh, the bent note and the top string a few times before we release the bend and then just a little variation on the way the lick ends as well, but we're still resolving to that root note. So again, a bit of kind of pick and fingers going on in your right hand will really help you get that sort of chicken picking -y kind of country flavour. So that is the, uh, the, the first variation on our, our basic lick. Uh, I've got another variation for you which goes like this. Um, I'll try, try and play that again a bit better. Um, there we go. So um, again, it's, it's based on the same bend, that, uh, that second going up to the third with the fifth on top. But this time I'm playing both notes simultaneously as a double stop. And I'm just, just re-picking that double stop with the, with the string bend. So I, I'm just doing that with the, uh, with the middle finger and the ring finger of my picking hand. Releasing the bend. And then I've just got some major scale little double stop hammer on licks here. Um, so I've got that's just the ninth fret on the G, tenth fret on the B and I'm hammering on to the eleventh fret uh, on the, the G. Again that's that sixth to the fifth kind of a sound. Uh, then I'm playing the, the D note there and then hammering on uh, from the ninth fret to the eleventh fret on the D string just also holding down the ninth fret on, uh, on the G as well. So. so again, hammering into chord tones here. So hammering into the third of the, the, the C sharp, which is the third of the A chord. So that, that's our, our second uh, variation. And uh, just keep, keep on coming really. There's almost a sort of limitless number of ways you can vary this particular lick. Different ways you can articulate the bend, different ways you can follow the basic phrase, um, different colours you can add in, sort of taken from the, the, the major pentatonic or the, or the major scale. Um, but I've just got a couple more for you. So the, the next one goes like this. Um, This is a, a particular, particular kind of a James Burton-y flavoured lick, I think. Uh, starting off with our bend, top note, and then the bent note. But then we're holding the bend and going down to the tenth fret on the top string, still holding the bend. Then we're releasing the bend and uh, resolving the lick like that with a little kind of flat third to, to major third slide there and again resolving to our root note. So give it a little bit of palm muting, a bit of snap with your, with your fingers and it really starts to, to come alive. Um, I think this is probably the most difficult variation though, it's because you're, you're holding the bend and, and you're then changing to your index finger there. So you really need to be, be strong with your bending fingers to keep that lick in tune. Um, so that's variation number three. Um, what else have I got? I think I've got one, one more lick, which is this one. Um, how does it go? I can't remember. Um, uh, 
there we go. Um, so um, this is uh, sorry, just trying to get that one sounding right. Um, this one is all about a, a pre-bend. So um, I'm actually starting off with that 12th fret note bent um, and then I'm releasing it. So again, a quite a common country device. So I'm going. So I'm playing the top string note first. I've got the, the 12th fret note already bent and then I'm releasing it. Now, this, this is quite a tricky technique. I mean, I, I was <laughs> struggling to get it in tune just then, but the, the, the reason for that is we're, we're bending and, and we don't know what that bent note is going to sound like. So it's just kind of feel um, an experience that is going to get you in the right kind, kind of area. So you just want to bend that up until it's, until it's in tune, but you won't actually know for sure until you strike the string. Um, so it's, it's a bit tricky like that, but a bit sharp there. That's about right. So we're picking the top string, releasing the band. And then I'm just finishing that lick with a series of six double stops. So, um, Um, and that's our, our final variation. So uh, have a good play around with those. And um, I hope you'll have a try to try and come up with some uh, variations of, of your own. Um, I mean, what one kind of uh, obvious thing you could try would be playing this same lick, these same licks in some different places and positions on the guitar. It's, it's easy enough to change key with these licks. Um, this is in an A position, but you just need to change uh, change your, your root note, sort of slide the lick horizontally and you'll be able to play in, in different keys. Uh, you, you might also like to try uh, moving this lick onto different string sets as well. Uh, I mean, uh, an obvious way to do this would be to, to move the bend onto the, to the G string. Um, I think that, that should work quite well. So you could do, um, instead of doing this, you could go, um, Or, um, so uh, maybe play around, play around with that. Um, it might be an interesting exercise just to see if you could make all of that, those licks and variations work um, on the, the next string set over. See if you can figure that out for yourselves. So I hope you're getting the basic idea. What you now might like to try is taking this lick through a chord progression. And I've got a very simple chord progression here, just a one, four, five in the key of A. That's just an A chord, a D and an E, and then we're back to A again. And if you followed my advice and you've associated this lick with the underlying notes and chord shapes, then it's actually quite easy to shift the lick up and down the fretboard to fit the chord progression. So we're going to start over the A chord and just play the lick as we first learned it. Then harmony changes to D and we can just shift the lick down to here. We've got our D chord here in the second position and the lick should be right there under your fingers. Um, And then the chord changes to, to the five chord to E and I just need to move the, the D lick up two frets. We've, uh, we've got the E chord shape and here's the lick. Uh, and then we're back to A again. So I'm just gonna set this loop going and just very simply play over the top to show you how this might work. wait for the loop to come round to the start. And I'm going to start off with the A lick here. A one, two, three. The D lick. And E. that is about it for this video. I hope you've enjoyed it and I hope you enjoy trying to get some of these ideas into your own playing. 
I'm almost certainly going to film a follow-up to this video where I'm going to put some of these licks into a complete country solo, so look out for that one. It may not be next week, but it will be soon-ish. Uh, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye. Gear nerds, this is the stuff what I'm using to get the sounds in this video. The guitar is my Telecaster, it's a Fender 52 reissue Telecaster, had it for many years, it's, it's all completely standard, I've not made any changes to it at all. Amplifier is my 80s Fender Super Champ, it's an all valve amp, they don't make these particular amps anymore and my settings are like so, nothing particularly interesting going on there I don't think. Uh, pedal wise um, I'm just using one, one pedal really in this video and that is an MXR Dynacomp. It's a script logo reissue of that particular pedal I think and uh, then for the loop I'm just uh, using my TC Electronic Ditto Looper.